Stefan Lowe, yeah. Landon Plass. Yeah. How are you today? How I'm today? Oh, there was lag. Sorry. How are you doing today? Oh, oh, fine. I was I was playing guitar and preparing some stuff and um, looking some soccer, so German football. So that's okay. Absolutely wonderful thing. Um, it was very quiet on the band's front for about four years. Uh, what have you guys been doing during this time? The people think it's uh, it's quiet around Funten Plus, uh, but it's not. Uh, we we did a lot. We did a lot um, before before Corona started. COVID. Uh, we released the two um, uh, CDs, the two experiment CDs, Ghost Experiment, and uh, after this, we we uh, released a live. Mm -hmm. Shadows. So where we did another CD, and uh, we played uh, our own rock opera called Last Paradise. Oh, internet is, it's working. It is. We had a little okay. bit, but but it picked up. Okay, and uh, and then we did our rock opera, which is called Last Paradise Lost, where we played a lot of shows in the theaters in in three theaters in in two in Germany and one in Austria. So we played a lot of shows also during the COVID times, and um, and we wrote the songs for the CD we just released. So the people think we we maybe think we are lazy, but we're doing a lot. Uh, but maybe it's not so well known because we are not playing on the bigger festivals or something like that or not a tour, but. We are busy all the time. Awesome. No downtime at all for you? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, do you think that when you, even when you step away from a band for a little bit, which you don't do, uh, do you perhaps find yourself being more creative? Uh, how, how do you mean that? What do you mean with step behind the band, Summer? Writing for the, for, for the band, and then you come back after after about a few months do you find yourself being a little bit more creative uh, with your ideas um for me i'm working constantly on songs so even if we are even if i'm on on tour if we are if I'm in a hotel for example and we have uh, some shows and i'm in austria somewhere i have my pc with me and i have a uh, a way where we can write songs with a special program and um so i i'm always working on, on, on new on new ideas and on, on new songs. So my I don't have a period of creative uh, where I write songs like uh, for example, are we, we have to release or we have to deliver a, a CD in uh, in a year so then I start half a year before with the songwriting because that would not work that it would be too less time. Um, I'm writing songs all the time. I, I figured out that I have some times during the year where I'm more creative then in other times, I don't know why, but that's not because of Fountain Plus or something else. I, I noticed that since years that I have special periods where I write songs. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but um, I try to finish the songs as soon as possible. That, has, that means if I have an idea, I start to work on the song as much as possible to get all the major parts together in a very short period. That means in a week, for example. I don't like to work on a song like month and month and 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 try this and this part and then I change parts. That's not my way of working. My my way is uh, um, that I write the songs in a kind of flow, because then I have the best feeling for the song. Wow! So and that's the way how I, how I write. In a way, um, did you approach this record any different than anything else before? Uh, what what means approach in this case? I don't understand. How would I say it? Um, when you were writing the songs uh, for this album, did anything feel um, different? Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it felt different. I mean, for the for the for the CD itself, not because um, in, in 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 at first sight, um, because for the last two CDs, I also wrote almost all the music, and Andy always writes the the lyrics and and the the the, the vocal lines. And but um, we knew before we really finished the songs that we have lineup lineup change after so many years. So um, um, that was was a kind of difference because I talked to Alessandro about the songs, and that was a kind of difference we had. And we we talked about how we will sound uh, for this CD, and our common uh, way of thinking of these forty songs was that we want to go a bit back. Uh, to the roots of Fountain Plus, not pushing it, 
not trying hard to make it, but the, this, when we heard the songs, we realized if we produce it in a certain way, uh, we will get the feeling that we had maybe like 20 years ago, something like that. We didn't want to change our style and say we want to make the same music like on Color Temple, for example, not, not at all. But um, we had uh, elements on Far of Christ or Christ Zero, uh, which is more basic, not too much, um, let's say, not, not too much um, classical instruments, not too much orchestra. And um, we thought we want to focus with Alessandro on, on, the, on, the, on the keyboards. We want to focus more on how the keyboard sounds in the uh, had sounded in the beginning of Fountain Plus. Like uh, a Hammond and just another keyboard, uh, maybe some strings, but not a complete orchestra behind a lot of parts. And um, that helped us a lot to produce the CD the way we wanted to, because it sound. I think we thought it's we it's a bit more open. We have more room to put, to show the single instruments. That's the way. What is kind of what was a bit a bit different to the previous CDs. That makes sense. Um, the album is called The Empyrean Equation of the Long Lost Tanks. Uh, what a great title. Can you explain the meaning of this title? Yeah, uh, Andy came up with this with this long title. Uh, first, uh, when I heard it first, I was like, okay. But um, immediately when I, uh, when I repeated it and I, I said The Empyrean Equation of the Long Lost Tanks, I thought it's, it sounds so cool in a flow. It, it's really cool. And... Um, uh, yeah, it's it's Andy's uh, Andy who's responsible for the lyrics. Um, he is um, when in the spirit when he wrote the lyrics, a lot of his thoughts were about what is really important for him. You know, we are all getting older. We are not the twenty years old students which started with a band and and get our first success with the Color Temple. We are now a bit older, and uh, then you you start about to think what is really important for you in life, maybe what is less important. All these things would make sense for you when you were young, maybe don't make too much sense now when you're older. And um, for him, it, it was a special time also with COVID and all these things where we start thinking about the little things which are really important for him. And that's what's uh, basic, that's what's in, in the lyrics, all in, in every song, it's, it's hidden that this is the main message. For him for the for the whole city and this is um yeah and and so he came up with the title so for him the title was a kind of summary of his thoughts uh what what he had in his mind when he wrote the lyrics so um he he is very detailed with all the things he's doing with the lyrics and uh, if you read it and you, you can figure out and you, and you know him then you know why, why he wrote this kind of lyrics so it's very sometimes it's very private so you you don't have to tell all your private things, but you can describe your private stuff in words which uh, where you can, which you can show to everybody. I hope I can explain it good. Uh, that does make sense. And I can completely relate, especially uh, being probably in the same age bracket. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the album has six tracks on it. We already spoke about the title song. Uh, I'm going to throw some songs at you and maybe you can tell me what the song is about. So the second song is My Icarian Flight. What is that song about? Yeah, that song is about uh, being afraid to lose uh, a person which is very near to to yourself. Um, that's that, that, I think that's a, a thing which is very important for for everybody in life. And everybody has persons which are near to us, and at a certain stage of your life, you are getting afraid to lose somebody. That's the natural way of life. Let's say it's like that, but it doesn't mean that it's not important for everybody. It's getting important. The older you get, the more important it, it gets. Once again, I couldn't relate more because, I mean, I have friends and relatives who, who are now gone. Uh, so yeah. at a young age and, and uh, you can't control that. Yeah, and that, that's the, that's the point. If you if you if you have lost people or you, you're afraid to lose people, and I you know I, uh, I honestly if you if you want to be go deeper in that, then you should you had to or need to talk to to Andy about it because I'm just um, try to explain the meanings which he has in his mind. Um, but I think um, uh, this is the this situation with with the lyrics is so personal and this thing 
um, that he explains this to us, but sometimes even he, he sometimes he uses words I never heard before. Uh, <laughs> so 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 it's sometimes I have to because I'm not a native English speaker, so uh, I have to ask him what does it mean, and and so sometimes when he explains all these words and then finally yeah then you 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 understand it but it's not in the beginning it's not that easy it's not an, when I, he shows me the lyrics but sometimes i have to ask what do you mean by that yeah so it's not that easy so honestly andy is would be better to 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 go in detail but i'm i'm, I'm quite enjoying your take on this because uh okay. Tend to interpret things, and then so do I. So it's 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 a it's a good good way of uh, explaining. Uh, the next song, uh, another strange title, Sanctimonarium. Oh, what is Sanctimonarium about? Uh, oh God, I had to. Normally, I had to get my 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 sheet of paper where I had the, the, the summary. I, I I can't explain everything now because of the names. Sorry. Or maybe you can explain what does the song mean to you, like even in yeah. um, instrumental wise, it's like that. Sandy Monarium for me, it's um, the one of for me personally, uh, one of the most exciting songs I have ever written. Um, not because it's 10 minutes, uh, more because it's 10 minutes and you don't ex you don't feel it like 10 minutes because there's a lot of things going on. Um, we for Phantom Blast, the most important is always the song itself. So we are a kind of technical band because we are based in this genre, progressive rock, progressive metal. Um, but we don't focus too much on te on technical stuff. We have some technical stuff. So for the musicians, where they can say, ah, okay, they can play their instruments, but it's not the the main thing. It's not the major thing we are focusing on. Uh, focusing on um, the thing is. I like to combine heavy riffs, also maybe kind of traditional riffs with technical stuff and with big harmonies already when the when the song is written. So I think with Phantom Plus, uh, maybe what's was what makes Phantom Plus uh, special is that we have two parts of melodies because we have the melodies in the vocals, which is quite normal. But uh, I, for my feeling, what I, what I try to do is in the when I compose a song that we have a kind of melody already in the song, and both fits and then we try to make it like that that both melodies or melody parts fit together, and that is what what I totally uh, like. And um, the, the the riffs they have to don't have to be totally complicated. You don't need different measures and different harmonies every ten seconds. Um, uh, progressive also means that you uh, uh, try to maybe to come to combine a part which you already had in different variations for example so progressive doesn't mean all the time being the fastest and whatever uh, it also means to to work with different parts and um sanctimonarium is very special it has very heavy parts is is going down and we have a breakdown part then comes very something technical for half a minute for example and then when i heard the song at the end i, I thought there's something missing and uh, i i called uh, marcus tesco who's our engineer in the studio and said we have to put a big choir at the end of the song so we got a big big ending so um that that's for me somehow progressive because for me when i when i write the song it's some if, if you would hear if you would hear the demo of the song what in, for my pc the music is like 90% what you hear later on the CD. It's not a big difference, but then it's important what you put, the, like the, what is the, the cherry on the cake? Maybe to explain it like that, to put some some cherries on the cake where you can see, aha, this is the song. And now in when we produce it, we, we put some extra cherries on it to make it really sound special. And I think in, in Sanctimonarium, it worked and Andy did one of his best vocal performances ever on this uh, song because in the in the in the chorus he he sounded a bit bit more rough, and I think we never had this before in that way. And when I heard the vocals the first time when he when he was uh, in the studio, I I said to Andy, "That's awesome! I never heard you singing like that. It's rough, but it's still your voice." And that opened up another 
another way for Fontenblast. So for example, for the next song, I have some songs written where I thought maybe these are a bit too heavy for Fontenblast, maybe. But I said to Andy, now that I know that you can sing also like that, I don't have doubts that we can use these songs for the next CD. So new doors can open up. Um, yeah, what... absolutely. Even if we are old, we can open new doors musical-wise. Yeah. Not agree more. Um, what about the sacrilegious mind machine? Yeah. Sex, it, it, that that's a bit in um we um I always make a list with songs because as I said I'm composing songs already I, I already composed for the next um um uh, CD and I make a list because I want on on the CD I don't like it if it's like you have like only fast songs in the beginning uh, and 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 ballads at the end something like that I always lead a, a kind of variation so and um this was a song where, where on my list sanctimonarium and and sacrilegious mind machine was a bit on on the same because they're absolutely heavy with heavy riffs and and th these two make the difference between for example uh, the ballad they call me god for example which is totally different and uh, uh and for march of the saint which is heavy but has a lot of uh balladesque parts so um, that's and these these um, two songs are for me the um, the middle of the CD. For to explain it like that, because from this middle of the CD we have my Carrion flight, which is very commercial. We have the instrumental in the beginning, which is totally different, and we have they call me God and March of the Saint, which is which have a lot of ballad uh, balladesque parts, and so this is. This were the songs where I said we have these songs, and from these two songs we go out to the variations of the other songs. And we, so, what I mean is, we we can't make a CD with just songs like Sacrilegious Mind Machine um, or, or Sanctimonarium. If we would do it like that, we would have sixty minutes of progressive metal, and at the end everybody is destroyed because it's only heavy, for example, or only technical, and that's not what we want. We need this variation because Andy's voice is uh, a voice which needs harmonies and which needs sometimes just a slow part so he can express himself. Only, let's say, only metal or heavy songs, that's not our way of producing a CD. Um, from listening to you talking about these songs, uh, I get a feeling that what's really important to you is the right balance and the right feel. Yeah. Absolutely. That that's what I try to to express. Um, the the since the beginning, Phantom Blast was a kind of hard rock band, but we were never a heavy metal band. Yeah, but we were also never a ballad band. It, it's always it was so important since the beginning. Melodies are the basic thing of Phantom Blast. They have to be there. It doesn't matter if the melodies are coming from the guitar or the keyboards or the vocals, but we need melodies. This is so important. This And I think that's talking about progressive music. Sometimes for me, I don't listen to uh, music too much, honestly. So I don't know all the bands which do progressive music. But if I listen to... Um, sometimes I lose the song if I lose, if I don't hear the melodies, then I'm lost. I'm lost. I, somehow I, I, I don't got the song. And that's the reason why I sometimes like to hear, I give it, for example, I'm giving guitar lessons, which you can imagine, and they do a lot of um, normal songs. And for example, if I listen to Pink, so the metal song, metal uh, uh, listener would say, oh, Pink, what you, Pink is pop music. Yeah, but Pink, you can follow the song and, and it's a good, great uh, singer it's it, it great songs if you like this kind of music and so and that's what i mean you, you when you have the melodies for me this is very important if it's a pop song it's a pop song but if if it's for me the melody and it, it catches me then it's then it's a good song for me and i don't make a uh, i don't divide uh, till a special point if it's not heavy enough i don't listen to it so i you know i i don't limit myself no, and that makes sense. I mean, that's why someone like Richie Blackmore loves ABBA. Yeah, uh, ABBA is. I just uh, just uh, some days ago I watched uh, a documentation about ABBA because they every song because I was a little bit uh, my my older brother he was a big ABBA fan and um, I so I got some songs from him when I, I learned some songs when he listened to it on his stereo and but from a special. Uh, Waterloo was in 1974, so 
I think some, something like that. So I was a very young kid. So this was a bit, bit too early. But all the other songs, if you see the, if you listen to the documentation, every song, you know, I heard it. I, and it just immediately, you can sing the song, which is absolutely great. And it's ABBA. If you, I played some other stuff for, for some special shows where you play ABBA. It's not easy listening music. It's not three chords and that's it. A lot of harmonies, a lot of things are going on. So these two guys are genius. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like for me, like, like, uh, like the Beatles, it's the same thing. So um, these, these guys, they are really, really, really awesome. And they are really on the top of the bill. Absolutely. Doesn't get better than that. Um, now, you obviously have a very strong record on your hands. Um, when you play live, do you plan performing all of the songs live or only selected tracks? Uh, not, not all the songs. Um, because if we, if we do it, all the songs, we have one hour and then what, we don't have too much time rest for the for the for the other songs we have like uh if i'm not wrong it's the 11th uh cd mm -hmm. so we have to focus on which songs for first it's like that if i make the set list it's like that which songs are good live songs not every song from every cd is also a good live song that's 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 like it is um and then I have to to remember which songs we we have played already often uh, played very often in the previous years, and then we have to focus on which are the fan faves. Yeah, so uh, a lot of things which uh, influence the set list, and then you play if you play with another band, you which is quite normal. You can you can't play like three hours, so you play like one and a half or two hours and. So if we would play uh, uh, Soul Survives and How Many Tears and March of the Saints, it's almost not an hour, but 50 minutes, something like that, or 45 minutes with three songs. So uh, you have to take care that you that you don't focus too much on sh too short songs and not on too long songs. And um, we already talked about, because we, we are planning a tour in 25, in beginning 25, we want to play live again because we haven't for a while. And um, yeah, we said we need to go back a bit to also to Color Temple to see which song from Color Temple fits to the previous songs, uh, to the to the uh, actual songs. And um, yeah, so that everybody finds himself in the set list. So if somebody grew up with Fun Plus in 1994 and we play a song from Color Temple, cool. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's how we do it. Being based in the United States, any chance of you visiting the United States on the upcoming tour? Planned, but not confirmed. So okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it's it's like that. Uh, going to the to the states, it, it's you can't just decide. Oh, okay, tomorrow we fly to the states and we play. It's not working like that. What how you can imagine? You need the permission. Uh, you you have to 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 find the club spot. We are working on it. And it looks very, very good that we are in the States in 2025. Uh, but um, talking about it before it is confirmed 100% doesn't make sense. Um, but we are working on it. Um, we had some great experience in, in, the, in the USA. We did a live DVD recording there years ago. Um, and I think uh, the, the people like us there because the reactions were great. So... There's no reason not to come to the U.S. There are more reasons to come to the U.S. Absolutely, even though it's it's getting more and more difficult, and a lot of bands have been have been saying that. Yeah. Um, um. So so finally, finally, uh, of, of all the things you've done musically, what is something that you're the most proud of? Oh, this, <laughs> this is a good question. This is a good question. Wow. Um. In in general. Maybe I'm the most proud of that we are still making music together. Yeah. That's uh, 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 maybe the most important thing for us that I still do. In, uh, I, I'm with Andy and, and with my brother Andreas. I'm in the band since 1984. I was really absolutely young when I was joining the band. So now you can imagine how old I am. <laughs> But uh, so, years of music. 
Yeah, yeah. I was I was totally young. I was not really good guitar player. I was, but they needed a guitar player, and I knew the song, so they they asked me. That's the reason. Uh, my brother was in the band, so you know there was the connection. But I was absolutely young, and I was too young to. I had to ask my parents before I was playing the shows because I was too young. They have to give the permission that I'm allowed to to stay there that long because I was too young. Uh, that was a very funny situation in the, in the beginning. Um, but if you would um, uh, compare, for example, if musicians start to compare the CDs, for sure, most of the a uh, uh, lot of musicians say, ah, the early CDs are not so good. Now the CDs are great, and I don't think that way because honestly, I don't think it's like that. Mm -hmm. There are bands. If you look to the bands, most of the bands have the climax on the third CD. If, if you yeah. if you start to think not all not a lot but the so the climax is uh, most of the time the, the debut is oh 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 one second my battery is going down before we lose we each other almost, wait. almost finished are we good <laughs> yeah but it, it the thing is goes very fast oh so i i fix it one second so i'm good so the thing is um, the, the debut is all the time what, what a lot of people like because they discover a band. So this is uh, a lot of things. Bon Jovi, Iron Maiden, all these bands uh, have a very strong debut. Um, first, uh, first CD. Is debut the right word? I think so. Yeah. 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 And um, so and if you if you go through the bands, it's a lot of time they that they make like two or three other CDs and then they are going on the, on the climax and then it's going down a bit. So, uh, so this is a kind of thing where I'm proud of that. So a lot of people say now we are doing our best city ever. It's not me saying that; it's the people saying that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I don't compare the cities be because in the color temple we were young kids, students, you know, uh, not so experienced. So we we just get our stuff together, playing songs, and try to achieve something. And now we got experience of eleven cities, and I think three live cities and tours and. A lot of theater uh, engagements where we played Jesus Christ Superstar, Little Shop of Horrors, Rocky Horror Picture Show, all these things. And we produced our own CD, uh, rock operas. So we are much more experienced. So it would not be fair to compare the CD which we have now to Color Temple. But there are fans which still say Color Temple is your best CD. And they have the right to say that because they... Uh, feel it and they had uh, their special relations to yeah. this first CD. So it's not on me telling everybody now is the best CD. It's just on me to say here are our CDs, choose it and, and listen to it. And if you still the best, fine for me. If it's God thing, fine for me. Because if I wouldn't, if I would act different, I would say our previous CD are not good, but I'm still proud of these previous CDs because we did a lot of power and a lot of um, um, emotion in these previous CDs. So that's what I, I wanted to say. I don't compare and, and I don't say this is the best CD we ever wrote and this and this and this. I'm proud of the situation that I'm still making music with Andy and with Andreas and uh, now with Alessandro and Thorsten for sure too. And um, yeah, sorry, I forgot Thorsten. But with Andreas and uh, Andy, I'm early on the band and Thorsten came uh, beginning of the uh, end of the 80s but it's still 35 years and and it's a pleasure to work now with alessandro he's totally nice professional a great musician so it's we are lucky that we found him because gunda is a great musician too so it was not it's not an easy thing to replace him and with alessandro we found somebody who is really same level and he got his own style so we are happy that we can work with him and that's that's what I'm really when when I thought about the last reactions we got some really good reviews on on Amazon charts we were in the heavy charts on number one so in Germany and in, in, in France in Italy and for sure we were a bit proud of that because we haven't achieved that before in that um, in that way not that much but the basic situation of Funden Plus is what makes me happy. That's absolutely fantastic. I mean, just the fact that you are able to uh, be able to make music for four decades, uh, that's very impressive. Um, thank yeah, you absolutely. for being with me uh, and good luck with the new album. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time.